When we first discussed the center of gravity, I mentioned that many bodies with complicated shapes can be approximated as the combination of several simpler common shapes. These are known as composite bodies. For example, you can imagine an ice cream cone that can be considered as a combination of a reversed cone shape and a portion of a sphere. Therefore, the centroid of a complicated body or area can be more easily determined through its component simpler volumes or shapes. In this video, I will only show an example for a composite area, but it follows the same approach for three-dimensional composite bodies. So let me remind you that the centroid of common simple regular geometric shapes are widely summarized and can be easily found either online or in your engineering textbook or handbooks. We will need to use these known information to find out the centroid of composite areas. And again, these are the two equations to determine the centroid location that we learned in the previous video. If you recall, the x tutor and y tutor in these two equations represent the coordinates for the centroid location of the differential element. However, if you remember what you learned in calculus, integration is essentially just a summation. The difference is, if we need to add up an infinite number of elements, we call it integration, versus if we are adding up limited, countable elements, we call it summation. Therefore, for a composite area that is made up of a countable number of simpler areas, all we need to do is to replace the integration sign in these two equations with a summation sign. And now we have the formulas to calculate the centroid for a composite area. You can apply the same approach to the centroid of a composite body, the mass center of a composite body, or the center of gravity of a composite body. Just change the integration sign to summation sign. In this equation, x tutor and y tutor represent the centroid coordinates of each component body or area. Now let's look at this example. Find the centroid of this composite area. From observation, we can tell it is a combination of a rectangle, an isosceles right triangle, and a quarter of a circular area. Therefore, we first put the composite area in an xy coordinate system, decide that these three are our simpler component areas, and use reference book or internet to locate the coordinates for their respective centroids. Please remember, they must be with respect to the same coordinate system. It is easier to use a table. For each component area, fill in their respective area, the x coordinate of their centroid, x tutor, the y coordinate of their centroid, y tutor, Again, please make sure that they are with respect to the same coordinate system. And then fill in x tutor times its area and y tutor times its area for each of the component areas. Add the term a together to get the total area. And also add the term x tutor times a and y tutor times a together. And then plug them into the equations and calculate the coordinates of the centroid for the composite area x bar and y bar. And here it is, the centroid of the composite area. Note that you can set up the xy coordinate system differently. As a result, the centroid will have different values for coordinates, but they should always correspond to the same point in relation with area. Or if you decide, this composite area can be considered as a bigger rectangle minus a triangle and then plus again a quarter of a circle. That is fine too. We again put the area into an xy coordinate system and find the centroid of each component area again with respect to the same coordinate system we put the information into this table. Note this time, component two has a negative value for its area. So adding area two is essentially the same as subtracting the area of this triangle. Through calculation, we will get exactly the same location for the centroid 
of the composite area.